In this video, I will demonstrate how to use the Claim Variability Benchmarks product to dynamically benchmark a lost development pattern and a reserve range. To set the stage a bit, development pattern benchmarks can be used in anything from a year-end reserve analysis up to mergers and acquisitions. Essentially, any time the development pattern data you are using is not fully credible. When you search for benchmark patterns, the first issue is finding a benchmark that is similar to your data. After you do find a suitable benchmark, it would be very rare to find multiple benchmarks that you could use for a range and impossible to tell if your range corresponded to any statistically based percentiles. With that bit of background, let's start the demo. So here you can see that I have a paid loss triangle open and I've done a preliminary review of the age to age factors. With the heat map, I can see there's no real discernible patterns here. So I kept it simple and just selected a volume weighted all year average. I've used a couple different methods to create a tail, selected a tail factor, and so I have these default factors, which gives me an initial estimate of the ultimate loss of 64.27. So now I can make a copy of the default pattern and start the benchmarking process. So now you can see that I have opened up the template that comes with the product. I have on, on the inputs page, there are a number of things that you can select at the top, um, but for our purposes, the only thing we really need to select is the line of business that this corresponds to. In this case, it's commercial auto, so we're all set. Scrolling down a bit, I can paste my initial factors, and I can compare these to the average pattern that I would get from any other benchmark. And you can see that while it's an okay fit, graphically, it, it's a bit off. Now, if I only had an average benchmark to compare to, then I really wouldn't have uh, much flexibility. But in this case, because the data behind the benchmarks is based on thousands of data sets, I can look at different percentiles to see if I get a better fit. In this case, the average best fit is the 46th percentile. So if I switch to that, I can see that the benchmark actually moves a bit closer, but only marginally so. In many situations, that might be what you need to get, to get a pattern that fits your data. But given the number of data sets we use for this benchmark, it's quite conceivable that individual patterns could be slower at some points and faster at others and vice versa. And so that's what we see here. So seeing that we have different fits at different parts of the pattern, we could blend two different patterns together and see if we get a better fit. So scrolling down a bit further, and with a little trial and error, they came up with a blended pattern of the 13th percentile and the 79th percentile, which is about the 26th percentile on average. And you can see from the graphs, that this is a much better fit now. I've anticipated the slower and faster patterns that are more applicable to this particular line of business. So I've, I've actually used benchmarking to, to really fit the data that I'm using and smooth it a bit. So you can see that I have these smooth patterns here that are much closer to what I started with. And to me, this is a very powerful way to customize a benchmark to your data while avoiding overfitting. Now that I have a blended pattern, I want to scroll down a little bit further and select between the original pattern and the benchmark pattern. Uh, I could also override individual age to age factors. Um, but to keep it simple, I'm just going to select the blended pattern for, for most of the development patterns and just add the tail factor from the user selected. And now with this selected benchmark pattern, I can go back to my reserving software. So now that I'm back in the reserving software, I can paste in my selected pattern, and I can see that it's changed my ultimate a little bit. But as I expected, it really didn't change it a lot. It really smoothed things out, and so move forward to the next stage. Back in the template, I've scrolled down a bit further, and now with this benchmark pattern, I can select patterns um, lower and higher than that uh, by a specific number of percentage points. Here, I'm just going to use 10 percentage points, and you can see the patterns um, that emerge around the pattern that we started with. Uh, and so now I have range patterns, high and low patterns, that I can copy and paste into the reserving software as well. So let's start with a low pattern. Moving back to the software, I can paste that in. You can see that my answer has gotten a bit higher. I can continue the process by selecting the higher pattern now. Repeat the process. Now if I paste this pattern in, see that the ultimate changes again. And using the ultimate estimates in the example, I jumped ahead a bit to graph the unpaid estimates. And I've compared them to the estimates from multiple methods, such as the paid and incurred chain liner and BF methods in the weighted part of the graph. The dynamic nature of the benchmarks is really not done because I can compare this benchmark range with multiple method range, which may lead me to reassess one or more of my other estimates. For example, you might now consider the estimate close to 600,000 unreasonably low. I hope you benefited from watching this demo. You can find more information on our website including an article that digs deeper into creating reserve ranges. You can also send me an email, and I'll be happy to help you benefit from the claim variability benchmarks.